Welcome to the session, the Wikibase software, data and collections in the linked open data web. Um, I'm gonna, I'm saying a couple of things later before we start. I, I was actually hoping and asked for a workshop. I only got a demonstration, I think it's something like that. It's fine, it's one hour, it's a lot of time, and we're gonna do it like that. We're gonna, I'm gonna be really talking, I'm gonna, what? It's, In yeah. your workshop. Yes, yes. <laughs> you will, uh, uh, you, 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 I hope you will feel free to jump in, to interrupt, to raise your hands or not raise your hands, and to engage with the things I will be saying, especially if I'm talking nonsense, right? It's, it's everything, like there's nothing that is uh, super clear here. There are things that are complicated, things that are complicated with me as well. So at whatever, at whichever point you feel like you are losing the thread or I am losing it, then please raise your hand, ask questions. There are no silly questions, okay? I'm gonna spoil the surprise and say that as a matter of fact, at the very, very end of this presentation, which I will share afterwards, I have included a glossary with some terms, uh, with some terms that I will be referring to during the presentation. So, some of these things, you know, you can return to at your own pace if you want to. Otherwise, yeah, I will start by saying. I work uh, at Wikimedia Deutschland, I'm the partner systems manager, and I do focus on Wikibase, basically. We have the uh, entire portfolio of linked open data at Wikimedia Deutschland, which includes Wikidata and Wikibase. <coughs> I'm focusing on Wikibase, on partnerships with, uh, around Wikibase. I'm responsible for connecting with global institutions and organizations. And yes, I... <coughs> I am these things. I'm an anthropologist and a social anthropologist. Uh, Wikimedia Deutschland is the national chapter of the Wikimedia movement. It's the oldest one and the largest one. And what is what is also really interesting there at Wikimedia Germany is that uh, it has an in-house software development partner. It has a department of engineers and others, of course, who work mainly to develop and maintain Wikidata and Wikibase. This is part of our uh, Wikidata and Wikibase are basically the core of our linked open data vision, which is something that uh, is absolutely, it's very central, let's say, in our strategy of Wikimedia Deutschland, in our aims, goals, vision, and so on. Uh, right. So, I will start by saying that this is the definition that we have uh, somehow gathered through the years, trying to make it as concise and as you know, pointed as possible. Wikibase is free software that stores and organizes information that can be collaborated with, edited, and read both by humans and by machines. They can be translated into multiple languages and they can be shared with the rest of the world as part of the linked open data web. So we better start exactly from that last sentence, the last words, the linked open data web. Let's take a look at what we mean with the linked open data then. Linked open data are open data who are also linked data. They are open data who take a little extra love, let's say, and they also get to go linked. So when we talk about open data, we talk about data that are openly accessible, of course, editable, uh, find of the set by anyone and for any purpose. And with linked data, we mean data that are structured and they can be interlinked with other data. There is, a, there is a model, the five-star open data model by Tim Berners-Lee, 
which has a very nice uh, illustration, let's say, of how we can think of data starting from a simple PDF scan of, uh, of a table and getting to actually the linked open data, the data that will be both open available in a way that can be read by machines and available in a way and with licenses that can make them connected and interconnected. <coughs> the linked open data web, we can think of how things work and how connections are being made in the linked open data web by looking, looking at an example. Like we have this artwork, this item here, that is being created by that guy here, that person, okay? And we know that this is created by him. So what we would do is that we would uh, apply URIs to these items that we have there. And URI is a uniform resource identifier, a string of characters, basically, that identifies a resource or entity on the internet. And we know that this means that, and it's there, and it's going to stay there, and we can always find it in this place by this nickname, this string of characters, next string of characters. And then an ontology, which essentially is a formal vocabulary that defines the terms and relations used to describe the domain of interest. So, an ontology that will tell us what these URIs have to do with each other. And then we would describe everything in terms, and we will publish everything in terms of three years. We're going to get uh, to discuss a lot about this later because this is essentially the architecture of the data modeling in Wikibase, in the Wikibase software. So we have an object, predicate, and a subject. We have two things and a relation between these two things, okay? I, ah, I'm not going to read anything of this, I'm just going to leave it there, but I wanted to say that this is, these are all part of what we describe as the semantic web, right? A web into which we try to contextualize and connect things. I'm going to go back to the, this definition, and I'm going to add a little bit more context and nuance there. Wikibase, a software, was launched in 2012 by the Wikimedia Deutschland. And initially, it was only created in order to build Wikidata. It was a software that was created for that sole purpose. But being a so an open source software, it was something that was being taken by others, by other institutions, who have been using it in order to create their own databases, their own small Wikidata, as it were, their own for whatever reason. So after some point, you could say like in the last few years really, we have put, we at Wikimedia Deutschland have put an extra focus on actually further developing this software. And I'm, we, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this later too, in the two variations of, uh, the two available variations of Wikibase. <coughs> Essentially, still, I mean, still is the software behind Wikidata, and this is a very important thing, and very important role of what it does, and it is also a really good example of what it can do as well. So this is also a good place to take a look at right now, to take a brief look at actually Wikidata. Wikidata is an open knowledge base. It's the largest in the world of its kind. It is, everything is published as structured data. Everything is published with a CC0 license. It is based on statements and references. It is made for humans and machines, as I was talking about. <coughs> Wikibase, the software that's behind it. Uh, multi liquid and collaborative. Wikidata has, it's now 12 years 
12 years old. He's, uh, he was born in an autumn day, so it's just about now, actually. Teenager. It's there. It's a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> it has started acting very weird with the specific acid. Uh, yeah. It started small. It's going bigger. And it's going bigger and it's going more global. And we hope through our efforts as well and through the efforts of everyone that it's going to be more distributed, let's say. And it's going to be more widely used and it's going to be more inclusive. It's going to, because Wikidata, and that's the magic of it, it has the potential of containing different world views and having them there sensible, presentable, and quality at the same time. So we, this is the this is the hope of everyone who's involved into this project, I guess, that it will become repositories that will contain other knowledge as well. There are many issues that make this very complicated, with, which have to do with uh, notability, with reference data, and so on and so forth. But, um, yeah. How is this map generated? Sorry? How is this map generated? I don't know. <laughs> I think <laughs> I did. I think it, shows, it shows Wikidata items which has uh, coordinates. Yeah. And just point. There you go. There you yeah, go. There's a lot of those. Is, is there like a script that it can be used for limited areas? I don't know. I think it's Adam who did this. Um, you can find out if you want that. I think it would be super interesting to see chronologically if yes. the presence of Wikimedia affiliates uh, helps have higher density in certain areas. Yes, Just yes, it would be super Not like you need story. a smartphone for it, and you have to show this on the map, but I don't have the script for that, so, yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can totally ask you if that would be. Uh, but back to the wiki base and without the context this time, so we have the types of it, right? I said it's software, so we ought to also take a look at it as software to see what it has. <coughs> wiki base essentially is a set, a bundle of expansions for media wiki. It's built as something, as an expansion on media wiki. As a software bundle, that will allow you to basically create and manage your own knowledge bases. Uh, the difference with Wikidata here, one difference with Wikidata would be that you are not confined by the data model of Wikidata. You are not confined by the properties, by the by the way it is structured. Right? It's a, it, you take the software that's behind it, and you can do your database flexibly to the way that you want to your knowledge base, basically. And again, you would have the infrastructure to support linking to external sources, interlinking as well. Uh, you would have an infrastructure that would support collaborative projects, data that can be read by humans and machines, multilingual labeling, and plus it is a community, it is also a community-based software. It is uh, our product managers and our engineers try to take in the wants of the community, the, the, the needs of the people who are actually using it, and it does have a community that is that can be very supportive, that can be very helpful. It can also not be, but you know, this is with communities can be. But it's a smaller community, however, and it's much more, I think, there's more cohesion somehow. And I'm just confused with those. Yeah. Okay, as such, yeah, it's a, we think it's a good software to, for flexible data models, for collaborative projects, and for all the things I said just before. I don't know any of these slides two times. It's not two times, it's with a different lima, so it might. <laughs> it's more hip. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so we take a look now uh, at how basically data 
are modeled with a weak base, with a weak base instance, as we call it. Um, those of you familiar with Wikidata, of course, recognize this and already know this, but I'm going through this anyway for those who are not. So the way the way you would structure things within a Wikibase instance is exactly the same the, the same basic idea behind how data are uh, organized within Wikidata. So we have this three structure of item, property, and value. We have items, which again are being assigned with a unique item identifier, again a queue number, like in Wikidata. And then for each one of the items, we have statements that consist of properties and values for the properties. Right? So the triple structure of item, property, and value, or if you prefer, as we were saying before, of subject, predicate, and object, right? This triple structure I was referring to before the link of the, discussing the link of the data. So the subject would be the item. The predicate is the relation that we connect with the value. So the predicate would be the property in this case, and the object would be the value. And here is where it's become really complicated and beautiful, because the value that we we'll say that my young girl has, was born in St. Louis. The value St. Louis is an item in itself, which again has the statements, the properties, and the values of its own. So we have this interconnectivity, and we have this now, in my opinion at least, pretty much radical move away from a hierarchical and nominative way of organizing material like that or in boxes. We have material, we have data that can be anywhere because it doesn't really matter. What brings them together are, is this infrastructure and this architecture. Uh, yes, so we don't need to think about this anymore like that. Is this a human being? Like, make a list of all human beings. We just have each human being as an item, and then we assign them as human beings. Uh, looking at the data, I have included a link which discusses the data, the Wikibase data modeling to a larger extent. But essentially, the architecture would be like a label, the preferred. Uh, name for this item in language X, of course. The identifier I meant, also known as uh, aliases, let's say. Descriptions, who would just like basically uh, simple text explain what this item is about. The properties I mentioned before, values for, for the properties. Qualifiers, which again consist basically of uh, couples like a property, n times a property, which we have value, and academic major in this case, and so on and so forth. A rank, which is a way to a way to control like our preference in different in different values for the same statement. And references, references, like where does this info comes from? <coughs> For it, yes, yes, so yes. So about the rank, like what would be the reason to change it or to put different ranks in different? Put them yes, uh, good question. Wikidata needs this. Wikidata likes this, but also no, I have seen it in Wikibase instances, and I guess it has to do, for example, you would. Uh, uh, you could have a statement of educated art and then have three different colleges where Douglas Adams did different degrees, right? And they would initially, if you don't do anything about that, initially they would appear on the order in which you imported the different values for that statement. So if you first imported where he did his masters, that would be the first one that you will see here. 
Okay, so it's like a chronological thing. It, does, it can be chronological, but it can also be important. You, you would also might want to have like a rank one for the state, for the value that has the best references or the most references. Uh, or Wiki's site was, for example, using it academic articles where the person who was writing the most article takes more ownership is the first, and then the second and the third. So if there are five authors, you at least know who to ask first and who gets. Nice, yeah, this yeah is that makes sense, but here, okay. Yeah. I mean, you make the sense of it if you want or not. Yes, I mean, think it is your database. Maybe you want to make exactly, to do exactly this, or you want to... And this is also one of the shortcomings. You don't describe what is the context for preferences. Like it would be good to have extra uh, parameter where you describe why you ordered like this place. Yeah. You would have different places, and you could say, okay, we find more the ones that have geo coordinates, and not the ones who not. So you're gonna put one rank up the ones who do have. It, but it's, it's, it really, it's, it's just a tool that you can use or not use if it makes sense or does not make sense in your database, no? I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? Any other question? I have a feeling I've been talking a lot. Yes, we have so maybe just another thing. So you said that the statements that are added on are just added on chronologically, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you yeah. add the educated at first and then the birthday and so on, right? So it yes. always stays in that order, or it doesn't. It doesn't, necessarily. So you can move it around. You can move it Yes. 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 Okay. We're cool for the time being, so... I think this is also a hard concept to grasp to contemporary Wikipedians. The Wiki is used to model content in a fluffy way, where you wouldn't have fixed structures, but you would assume that the structure will emerge. Like in, it will become more complex and sophisticated with more edits. So maybe you just throw a grocery list together, but then when you approach uh, shopping mall, you remember, ah, I actually want to cook, and the most important things are these. And these are discounted. So it becomes like super structured from something that's just like whatever I might shop today. But that doesn't happen in Wikipedia, Wikidata then, right? It can. Well, no, normally not. If the no, or only through the rank then, right? Like you can choose that the birth day will be first before education or something like that. You can even say it's not ordered or it's ordered by preference. What's the default rank? Entered. When it was entered, yes. Oh. Yes, that's the default. Okay. No. So no, it's going to be ordered in time if you don't change it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you can change it. If, it, if you want to change it. Because yes. it, might, it might also not matter at all. It depends what your database is exactly. for. Exactly. Maybe it's what one input. Exactly. And if you are uh, interested mostly in computers, like in the side of uh, human side computers, if you're mostly in the rest in computers, probably it doesn't make any sense anyway. Or it does, and I cannot think of it, I don't know. Uh, one reason of why it might not make a big difference anyway is because basically the way we, the way we, we can look into the data, we have database, a Wikibase database, is through the Sparkly language, the very powerful language, query language of Sparkly, which can ask questions to our data. It can ask, I've seen, you might have seen it also, those who are in the Wikidata mailing list, that was the best query in my life. Like, uh, so many all films made after the 2000s in Greece, with an actor who have been in Saturday Night Fever and music composed. It's my favorite thing in the Anyway, so you can ask super complicated questions to your data sets and really like magic happens with the 
I mean, if you look closely at these signals I have here, you will notice also, ta -da! you see the, the light turn on. It's the coolest transition I have done in my life. So it was like, so thank you, thank you. No, but really, it does quite incredible stuff. For example, it can produce, like, uh, it can show you data, results to queries on timelines. As for example, here in this uh, timeline of Cook the Tart here in the 21st century, these are examples from Wikidata, of course, right? But exactly the same way, you can ask your own database through the same process. Or, um, you can see such nice graphs then. <laughs> No, but this is this what I mean. I mean, you can ask it, okay, just how many musicians in my database are actually from the United States of America? So this graph is also a very good example of what is wrong with uh, my data for now, because it just cannot be that all of the musicians come from the United States of America, right? Uh, cool. Wikibase then comes as software. It comes into versions. We have the Wikibase suite, which is a software suite that you would locally download and install in your own and install in your own servers and run in your own servers, it's called your own machines. And it takes some technical experience, quite some technical experience, intermediate ways according to our engineers. Uh, it allows for a, a very high, theoretically very, very high uh, level of customization and for as many Wikibase as we want to so Wikibase instances. And then we have the Wikibase Cloud, which is hosted by us, uh, in our servers, that is, and we take care of it. It doesn't take too much technical experience to install and to run. It gets complicated later on, certainly. But it also doesn't allow for customization, doesn't allow for much customization, for sure not as much as the week base week does. Uh, yeah, you have this. We have these two variations and options. It's Often it happens that people start somewhere and end elsewhere. Yes, it happens. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's two different, it's two teams within Wikimedia Deutschland with two different product managers and two different engineering managers working in parallel, of course. But these are two, you know, two, two tools, let's say, that do different things. The Wikibase Cloud is being used extensively by smaller organizations and for smaller maybe data sets. But nowadays we basically see also uh, like organizations who want to work with larger data sets on Wikibase Cloud for a variety of reasons. And this is how when I mentioned like in the very very beginning our linked open data strategy, the yeah, linked open data vision. This is more or less what we hope, what we hope to be looking at in the future, so to say. Wikibases, Wikibase instances, at some point, at least, uh, at least if we think about Wikidata and a Wikibase instance, they can talk to each other. You can ask questions, not just to your Wikibase instance data, but also to Wikidata. You can combine things, and we hope that this will be this will be where we will be heading at, where we will be going, in <coughs> an ecosystem into which Wikibases will each complement each other in providing answers to humans' questions. So, to say. all right, uh, I can take questions. And I can also not take questions if there are none. Yes. What quantitative questions? Uh, do you keep track how many active Wikibase uh, cloud users are? Yes. And instances? 
Yes. It has proven to be way more complicated than we than what we thought. Yes, there is the um, wiki-based discovery feature. It's called it's on wiki-based cloud website, and it displays all wiki-based instances <coughs> that are up there. And the problem is <coughs> what we mean. What then we mean by active? Do we mean all the non-deleted wikis? Do we mean the ones who have been active in the last 30 days or the ones who have more than X edits? It's super difficult to identify. The, in this, in the discovery, you will find just everything, basically. But there is a, there is a conversation and some actions going on right now about exactly how to think what an active with base cloud instance is. There's also there are many there are many things to consider because with its account we can make six different with base cloud instances. So is it more meaningful to count by account or to count by instances? Because in my account they have six always. And when I want to make a new one for demonstration purposes, I just arrange one to make another one. What does does this really say anything? I mean if it comes as six and uh, so there is there is thinking around this actually on what to do. There is also if you have an inactive wiki-based cloud inactive for 30 days, I think now, you get an email which politely says, Hi, we noticed that you have an inactive one. Can, would you like to tell us something about it? Like a, no pressure, no nothing, but if you uh, why is it like have you given up? We need some care, we need some support, and so on, because we try to figure out how to make sense. And of course, the situation is way more complicated with Wikipedia suite. Because if you just if if the users don't tell you they use it, there are very limited ways to track down what is out there. We had a big uh, Sets, let's say, in the beginning of that summer for some reporting purposes, where we found out about some beautiful stuff that are out there, which we just didn't know because they didn't tell us so, and they shouldn't tell, tell us so because there is no reason to do. I mean, if you don't, you know, if you don't need something from us, probably why? It's a, yeah. So it's complex. Yep. But yes, we try to keep track. And uh, there, is, there is the discovery feature that I mentioned, and there is also the wiki-based world, which I seriously think should be much more cared about. And, you know, we did a couple of editathons where we tried to add some stuff there, some existing wiki-based instances that we knew about and were not registered there, but it's not enough. It takes a lot of uh, it takes and are there any main, uh, no more questions? Then I can just go and talk a little bit through some. Yes, please, please, please. Uh -huh. So it's uh, like open source project. Or is there any outside users outside of um, or Wikimedia community? Like, can I uh, take it and so post it and use it for my yes. random software? Yes. Yes, okay. this is mostly what it happens. I will take, uh, uh, you know, this will be my guess. This is mostly what it happens. People take it and do something about it. In some occasions, it's with the medians, but this is not necessarily the case, let's put it like this. And actually, not at all, because especially for the wiki base suite, it requires quite some skills. I mean, it's not enough to have a general understanding of how we get wiki. Work, so to say, it takes more to be something like this. So you have a, a lot of examples just, uh, of even you know business, even corporate uh, who who see a cool tool there, they take it for their internal purposes and build something. And it's not pretty easy that the data you will have there will be open. You cannot, we cannot do so. It's not like Wikidata. You can 
choose what licenses you have and what is open, what's not open. Like you, you, you know, it's not the, no, you actually cannot choose what is open and what is not open. You choose whether it's open or not open, let's say, like a, a statement. So you have many, for example, libraries who have taken it independently to build their metadata, their catalogs metadata, in basic instances, and banks. The problem is because it's, of course, it's a GPA2 license uh, software, so actually whoever is using it and is building new code on top of it should also publish this code as open. But I don't know if people are doing this or what ways do you have you know, to watch. Yes. Yes. Um, so from which community This is a very complicated question, which will also be addressed as a question in the presentation just after. Like this is the question of having different licenses and having different licenses on the same. It's something that yes has been asked, has been brought to our attention uh, for various reasons as well. Especially if you consider that like many of the organizations who are using Wikibase are from uh, how much? Sorry, I cannot see that way. Five questions or five people? <laughs> Good, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I get that. Uh, yes, it is. Like it, it, it is a problem. We, do, we cannot do something about it. The, it. the way to deal with it as it stands now is to have different Wikibase instances and to have a way of asking your instance, uh, depending on who's asking the question, so to say, to get in the data set that you want to go. But it's something that we need to address, because this is also a very important differentiation from uh, what happens in Wikidata, for example, where you have one type of license and that's it. Like it's, it's going to be not one, but you want to have open, basically. You have you don't have open data. Uh, but what happens you know, with data who are uh, sensitive, or a bit more sensitive, or data that, uh, when presented to certain populations, can be harmful. It's, really, it's a really complex, really complex issue. That for sure, we will be looking at. Right, OK, I only have five minutes then. I'm uh, about to conclude. I, I, I left this slide here, but no one can read what it says because it's very small writing. So it's just lines and colors that basically say that it's researchers and cultural heritage organizations mostly for using this base. Uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of movement in universities around the world as well. Who, who try things, who want to try things. Then we have a lot of libraries. Some have tried, some have, uh, some are actually using it. Some are getting frustrated with trying to use it. But there is, uh, it is something that makes very good sense for librarians with a really good example recently being the National Library of Greece, which we found out like about a year ago, that 
the new director of catalog, Sofia Zapolito, Dr. Sofia Zapolito, she got this position in the National Library of Greece, uh, having just having had finished her PhD only in open data. And she went there and said, guys, I got it. We have the Greek strange characters, the different period, the different characters and the different Greek names of authors, depending on what period we're talking about and the types of the books and all that. But there's a way to make it, to connect it with library data in Latin and in other catalogs. And she has started a pretty impressive uh, wiki page project, which we, we are watching closely, let's say, what they're doing, trying to work with them, but they seem to be doing fine. There is a really nice article here. Link, but it's really good. Um, yay. And maybe another really good example is the Mimo Text Base, French Literature Database. It's a project which uh, mined a lot of text, put it into Wikipedia, and words. This is one of the, of the most beautiful examples of how you can use Wikidata and Wikibase. I mean, they went there, they had some very particular data, very particular data sets, and they didn't reinvent the wheel. They used whatever was already there in Wikidata. And the way they did this was uh, with Spartan queries, which were asking questions to their database and Wikidata. So they didn't have to go and write the birthplace, write an entry about the birthplace of each one of the authors that they're referring to in their database. It was already there, it was already there in Wikidata. So the question was how to find ways to ask the right questions between these two data sets, so to say. There is, I, I don't have time, I think. Yeah, yeah. I have. And let's listen to them talking about it instead of me saying. You have 15 minutes. And I have sound as well. If I play a video, will, will the people listen? Let's see. Let's see. No. No. You will not listen, so it, I'm not going to play it. I'm going to let you have the pleasure of... Uh, Listening to the video, listen to what they say because it's it's a really they really very well explain exactly this process of how they write their queries. They have created they have created a tutorial of like a general introduction to Spartan, but also a very particular one on how to ask these sort of questions. You will you will share will you share your slides? Yes, absolutely. I'm gonna. I'm going to put it on comments, but it's going to be PDF then. I can also send just a link in the Telegram chat after the presentation, if that works. Uh, Rhizome has a really good argumentation on why to. Rhizome is an art organization which archives all digital art, basically. And they say that one of the reasons they use Wikibase is basically because it allows you to make claims and statements, not talk about you know, facts and truths, to get beyond this way of thinking around uh, the world. You know, like, uh, yes, you can have multiple values, you can go through these two things, let's say, beyond a very single canonical version of the database. I think these are really good arguments in thinking about you know, how to organize information basically. Uh, yeah, like I said, there are several examples to go through. I will say this, and uh, in some of the cases there is really good documentation as well about uh, how people did, as, as for example here in the advanced teams archive where there is a really nice um, I'm missing the word, but let's say sort of a report on uh, what they did, how, many, how much effort they put on it, what they were, their blockers and so on. Uh, this, is, this is the best place in the industry. 
the same project where Zelco is also involved in the drive wiki based cloud. They have made, in my opinion, an amazing, they had anyway an amazing archive of uh, um, subculture elements, things like punk posters and uh, zine designs and so on. And they drive wiki based cloud. But it, they, it's, they, it's limits, I guess, especially with regards to the to connecting to a front end and making a meaningful front end. So maybe maybe it's a sweep or maybe it's not a wiki base. Right, that's it. That's it from me. Thank you. Thank you. And then <laughs> I have also included a couple of links, like the some of the places where you could communities you can join or where you could try maybe with this cloud to see how it works if you uh, when yeah we have some documentation we will get better at it I hope and uh, we will I think uh, but there are there are quite a lot of stuff out there if you want to find out more there are the communities where you can ask questions there are we are here I am here to get in touch and that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And I more questions. I have a question. Yes, um, please. So what is the competition in this software space? For your trials, I, I know that you're not trying to like compete with them, but uh, what are the alternatives? What are the alternatives? Yeah. Or like, if you talk to a land institution, who would you, I mean, what would you say to them? Like, yeah. Something that they're familiar with. I, I know that the Hungarian National Library wanted to have a new software system op on open space, uh, open source space. And they, one option was wiki based, and at the end they chose another software. Yeah. Which one do you I, I don't know, unfortunately. Why I could ask, but I don't know. But yeah, so there are, there are some other options. <laughs> and I can try to better point. So, yeah. so there are several options, but I think um, it is the complexity of setting up the migration why they are choosing commercial companies that offer their speed. So usually, I think it is quite expensive for a very large library to, to migrate. And uh, there are open source and non-open source ones, I think one's called OpenGraph, but um, usually it's the service that, um, that is the sign. And another question, so free as in no money, did I get this right? You would put this in, a, in so your... So free as in no money as well, right? Yes, yes. Right? You would post this yourself at no cost. Did I get it right? You would. The Wikibase cloud you mean, right? Yeah. The Wikibase cloud? Yes, yeah. it's there. It's, gonna, it's there at no cost, forever. Let's hope. And then the internet turns out to be. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. And how, how, how difficult is it? Third question. How difficult is it? get from wiki base to uh, like an institutional website that looks like a, um, nice. like a catalog, catalog, nice catalog, yeah. unlike uh, wiki data, which is a bit scary. Yes, this is uh, this is tricky, especially <laughs> like Zeriko. I to tell you, uh, for us, uh, I mean, we, because we were doing this for the first time and we have no idea <laughs> Except for Ryzen, who else did it? Yeah. Uh, we didn't have much to look uh, how it's being done. So at first we were intimidated, but I think after three, four months, we kind of got most of the ideas we wanted to see implemented. But it took a while back and forth within a team because some people only know front end, some only back end, some only logical wiki data, some only logical design some of the logic of archive. So for us to communicate what can be done and what should be done, because you also don't want to obfuscate 
all the features just by making beautiful design, or the other way around, to keep the ugly media we keep you from them just to have all the features. So it's kind of balancing act. We, we had to pull out from uh, Wikibase Cloud early, like you can't modify almost anything. Like only icon and like two, three things you can do visually, yes. everything else. Is default. The skin, like you have three different skins, and yeah. now you have the instant, uh, instant commons enabled, which allows yeah. for all of this was later. We <laughs> done this six months ago, so yeah, we, we kind of had to leave. <laughs> using, but I believe using the API, you can solve anything. So if you have a, if you create a website, whatever you want, so then, we then you can use a Wikibase API to yeah, yeah. ask. We self -host, yeah, yeah, we self-host client uh, and the server is still on Wikibase Cloud. So we don't have to update continuously ourselves, we just keep whatever they update and take the Website, this Wikibase instance, which collect, connects different data sets as well in different uh, sources, does look like what you would describe an institutional uh, front page, so to say, right? But uh, yeah, this is a Wikibase suite, this is a Wikibase suite that is being cared about, and that uh, also uh, I skipped that to jump in the beginning, but the European Union is using that as well. And it does look pretty profit on the front end, right? It is using it for the cohesio, for the data repository, the cohesio, where you have data about all the funding that the European Union has ever given in the institutions. So you can, you can set seat, or uh, citizens can set seat in a meaningful way, being able to see, you know, where geographically how geographically distributed is all the time the funding that you're giving is given for example. So yeah. If you have an institutional partner with the millions of items, uh, what is the best way to import into Wikidata? But I'm not sure. I think we should talk later on. Yes, yes, it's very specific. There are <laughs> tools that are better, and you know, there, you have created, you have the quick statements, they're really fine. Mm -hmm. Not everything works on cloud, for example, as well as. But uh, the Wikibase suite, it's more or less the options that you would have also for Wikidata. It's exactly it's the same logic, so it works, let's say, along these lines, but more complicated. Okay. We can talk later about it. Thank you. So, okay. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I shall...